12 kilometers south of the Syrian border is the third largest settlement in Jordan, yet it was only established in July 2012. The Satari refugee camp is home to 150,000 Syrian refugees who fled south from the conflict that's racking their nation. Young children make up nearly half the camp's population. And this is a fact not far from the mind of the president of the Jordanian Football Association. Through football, uh, we are managing to, 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 to help these uh, young kids, both boys and girls, uh, have a future uh, in terms of uh, uh, social development and, and understanding uh, uh, their potential. Uh, and we use it, uh, for example, with mine risk awareness, with, with, with other social issues, and to give them a healthy lifestyle, a feeling of well-being, which is in incredibly crucial uh, at the moment and I think that this is uh, probably the first time that this has happened in uh, a refugee situation to use foot football for, for social empowerment and as, and as a tool to, to improve the lives and livelihoods of, of, of our children. You know football of course is the, there's the issue of competitions and the sport itself um, but it's also a lifestyle and it's for the health and well-being of, of, our, of our youth both uh, men and women. After being elected a FIFA vice president by the member associations of the Asian Football Confederation, Prince Ali established the Asian Football Development Project. It's an independent body dedicated to helping children across the continent. With the Syrian refugee crisis still unfolding, a number of international organizations have lent their support, including Scotty Lee's Spirit of Soccer. So the idea that I came up with and discussed with His Royal Highness was that we could do a mine risk education program and a conflict resolution program with Jordanian and Syrian children, but mainly uh, concentrating on Syrian children to educate them about the landmines and the LW that will be waiting for them when they return to Homs and Apello and Damascus. I mean, for three years we've seen probably one of the most brutal wars ever, ever televised. Um, and there's going to be a huge amount of ordnance, cluster bombs, artillery shells, landmines, waiting for these children and their parents when they return back to their homes, when hopefully this conflict does end. Lee already runs his mine risk awareness programs in Cambodia, Afghanistan and Iraq. He employs locals and in this case has trained coaches from within the camp to work with the children. What's at stake is far greater than just training the next generation of hopeful sporting talents. But the most important thing is to really sort of push home that, you know, when you go back, now you're going to prepare to be a great footballer, but you're going to have to be really, really careful about being safe. So not when you're, when you're training and want to be the next striker for Syria and go and play for Real Madrid or Barcelona, because we're all massive Real Madrid and Barcelona fans, you're going to work just as hard to keep alive. Because you've survived the war, now you've got to survive the peace. The government of Norway, in conjunction with their football authorities, have also joined the AFDP in an effort to help improve the lives of the camp children. They built eight football fields and are looking to expand their involvement, especially as there seems to be no end to the strife north of the border. The world cannot be blind to see what's happening in Syria, for instance. Uh, football cannot be blind, and football is an excellent tool to uh, make the daily life a little bit better, to create a little bit better uh, understanding and respect for opponents and for your friends and take care of each other instead of fighting. The Asian Football Development Project also supports other social schemes across the continent, from India's marginalised children receiving assistance in the Magic Bus Initiative to Cambodia's young girls at risk of human trafficking. AFDP is working in more than a dozen Asian countries and the list is growing. Asia is a vast continent, so needs are many and varied. However, there's a great sense of urgency with AFDP's projects at the Zatari camp, where it's touched the lives of almost 30,000 children. Life is hard on that camp. It really is tough and it's, you know, they still got people back at home dying daily, you know? 
and this project has given them some kind of hope and it's given them some kind of status within the camp because within this camp obviously there is a more sinister, sinister side in respect of people possibly approaching young men especially to do things that possibly would hurt innocent people. The important thing is to get a larger number of children and to create an awareness of the leftovers of war and ensure their safety in the future. It's also about the magic ball that draws children together, to be honest with you. Once children see the football, they gather around it. Not only are these guys coaching and promoting mindless education, more importantly, they're becoming social role models within that camp. We have many programs, uh, but I think the main issue is that we are utilizing football uh, to empower our youth, to give them a healthy uh, lifestyle, and also to give them a, a sense of social cohesion, to work together, to, 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 uh, to ha have teamwork, to, to understand each other, and to have the time uh, to do something uh, uh, which everybody loves in the world and, and that, that's the power of football. So uh, we're very proud of this and, and we will continue to, to, to work on that. <laughs>